out at the range today. It's uh, a little bit damp, sprinkled a little bit, so I'll mostly stay under the uh, overhead today. Um, I was a little harsh on the Ruger LC9 back when I tested it, and I've got a lot of comments about that. Um, take my ear protection off here, nobody's shooting right now. The, uh, a lot of people uh, let me know they, they thought I was a little critical of it. I shot an LC9 later. Uh, that was a little later edition of it. It was a better gun than the first one I shot. But today I want to give Ruger another chance. I've got the little uh, Ruger SR22. It's unloaded. Uh, magazines over here. And uh, anyway, I've heard a lot of good things about this. I've always thought Ruger was just the king of the rim fires. So um, I'm going to shoot it today. First, I'm just going to shoot it at 25 yards. There's some real small silhouettes down there. I probably won't hit them. But mostly that's just to see how it feeds and functions and everything. Very interesting magazine in this that I was noticing. I'm going to bring it up and see if uh, I don't know that the camera will focus on it. But I've got it loaded. I don't know if you can see that or not, but the uh, it looks like the bottom six are single stack, pretty traditional, kind of like the uh, like the uh, Mark ones and Mark twos. And then up at the top, it, it opens up into a uh, almost a double stack configuration where the top four are actually staggered, two on each side of the magazine. Like I said, I don't know that you can really see that, but I, I think you might be able to. I don't know how that's going to feed. I assume Ruger probably studied that pretty well. Uh, I've got several 1022s and uh, several Mark IIs and a Mark III. I've never had a problem with any Ruger rimfire stuff. I think it is, is absolutely fabulous, so I anticipate this shooting very well. Like I said, I'm going to load it up right now, run 10 through it just to, uh, you know, just to make sure that it's functioning, and then I'm going to go down, put up a target, move a little bit closer, and we'll see, uh, we'll see how it performs. This is the, um, I guess you'd call it, it does appear to have a, a magazine disconnect in it. It also has a uh, safety lever on the side. I like the layout of the gun. I really do. It's got the uh, got the safety lock, got the uh, slide slide stop right here. Uh, it is a hammer, so I assume it's going to operate as a traditional kind of a double single action type gun. Uh, it also does have a decocker, which uh, lowers the hammer. I'm a big fan of the decocker. I hear a lot of mixed opinions on that as well. I think the decocker does more good than harm. I, I've heard people don't like it. They say it changes the trigger feel. They they think that if you're not familiar with it, that it can cause an accident. But one of the things that actually worries me is seeing somebody that's not very familiar with their gun trying to hold on to the hammer, pull the trigger, and lower the hammer down. So I'm a big fan of the decocker system if you're going to have an exposed hammer. Uh, anyway, without turning this off real fast here, I'm just going to spin this camera around just a little bit and um, so that I think you'll be able to see me I'm just going to step out here and uh, rack off 10 real quick just to to see if it functions good okay gun is locked back it is clear um, that was pretty good there was no malfunctions uh, super smooth uh, the little target down there I don't know if I can spin this around enough for you to see or not they're very heavy and they're small Let's see if I can zoom that in a little bit they um, by being so thick and so small and on a short chain they don't make a uh, any kind of a noticeable sound that you're going to hear. I actually, the one on the right, which is the biggest one, I hit it eight out of ten times. So, uh, and I'm not I'm not just saying that. I mean, I really did. That we're at 25 yards. That's pretty impressive. I'm going to uh, put up a paper target 
move in a little closer and try for some groups. But I was I was impressed with that. But then, like I say, that wasn't really a surprise to me because I've always had a real high respect for the Ruger Rimfire products. I, like I say, I love them. I think that's their uh, I think that's their Mona Lisa when it comes to uh, gun design is uh, the Rimfire stuff. Anyway, I'm going to shut this down for a minute and get a uh, paper target up and we'll see if I can shoot any kind of a decent group at all, probably at 10 yards. Okay, because of the rain, I'm going to leave the camera under the canopy, but I'm going to walk down there and try to shoot a group, see what kind of group I can get at 10 yards. I'll see if I can zoom the camera in enough to show the group. I really don't want to get the camera out in the rain. I don't mind the gun getting a rot drop or two of rain on it. I mean, it's not going to hurt it. It's a Ruger. It's a stainless steel. It's, it's a high quality gun and I'll take it home clean and put a little oil on it. But like I said, I really don't want to get the camera wet. So let me see how this thing groups at 10 yards. That's my uh, first time shooting that gun. I believe it'll do a little better than that, but that's really not that bad. Uh, I'm going to see if this will... Yeah, actually it zooms in quite nicely there. Um, let me see if I can get it. Boy. As jerky as I am with the camera, it's no wonder I shoot that way sometimes. That's, uh, oh, there's a couple out of the uh, of the black, and then the rest of them are all staggered in there at about an inch and a half. That's offhand shooting. Uh, this first time I ever shot the gun. Like I say, I don't have any doubt it'll shoot better than that. There's three or four down there in one hole, and then the rest of them are kind of, like I said, there's a couple that are kind of uh, high. Uh, actually, the one just out of the black was the first shot. I don't know where that one up there by the 8 number came from, but I might have yanked the trigger a little bit. But anyway, it's not bad at all. It's 10 yards. It's raining out there. Um, like I say, first time shooting a gun, so that's not bad at all. Um, I'll practice with that gun a little bit. I have no doubt that I'll eventually end up where I can put them all right in that red. I Also, I have not adjusted the sights or anything on it. So anyway, I think that's pretty good. I may not get a lot more shooting in today with this gun. I'm going to try to shoot a couple of other ones as well. One of the uh, things with the uh, Ruger 22, the older, uh, like the Mark IIs, the Mark Ones, they were a little bit difficult to uh, take apart and reassemble. One of these days I'll do a video on that just because I've done it so many times. But uh, one of the questions that I was asked before I got this gun was, is the uh, SR hard to take apart? And the answer to that is no, it's not. It's uh, actually very similar to a Walther or a Makarov style gun. So I'm going to do it real fast. Now, I haven't done it, so I may, I may not make it look quite as smooth as it, it could be. But anyway, first thing, obviously, with any of them is you take the magazine out, ensure that the uh, gun is unloaded. Um, I always turn the safety off on a gun with a hammer just so the hammer will stay back. That's just something I don't have to overcome. Anyway, there's a little lever right here that you just push down with your thumb and uh, open it up. And then when you do, you can just pull this back and just lift the uh, slide right off. And then that leaves everything inside the gun. Uh, the spring and recoil rod actually stay in place. The barrel is fixed like the uh, Makarov style guns. Really pretty simple to get to. 
pull the grip off and I mean everything that you're going to need for field cleaning and lubrication is going to be right there at hand. Uh, to put it back on you line the uh, spring up and the recoil rod with that hole then line the barrel up bring it all the way back and forward like that push your uh, locking mechanism back which on this is that lever on the back rod of course it's the uh, trigger guard and then you can decock it and uh, check the function of it you're ready to it's actually an extremely simple field strip. Much, much better than the uh, older ones as far as ease of uh, takedown. Let's say, I'll run through that one more time. Uh, snap the, uh, what did I say, snap the release down. Hammers back. We already, I'm going to double check it, press check it there, but I knew it was unlucky. Just lift the, uh, lift all the way back, raise up and forward that comes right off. Now this time the uh, recoil rod did not stay in place but that's no big deal. There's a little hole right there that it just drops into. And uh, again on the other side you can see you can you can pretty much get to everything you want. Spring goes into the hole, barrel goes through, back in like that. Locking mechanism goes into place and uh, the uh, gun is ready to go. Like I say that's a amazingly simple gun to field strip.